Now, coming up next, we have our expert speaker, John Khalid Bridgen, who will be speaking about the power of communications and its skills for HR professionals, the key element to transformation. John's mission in life is helping people to be successful. Currently, he's working as an entrepreneur, teacher, speaker, trainer, and a seasoned Toastmaster, who is also leading at, as a district level. He's also a health coach and a consultant. In this presentation, John will present an important message of how we communicate and the impact that we all can make. Please welcome onto the stage, John Khalid Bridget. <laughs> Thank you very much. It seems quite surreal over here. I'm just going to take in the vibes for a, a few seconds. So, when I've come up here, I've got a myriad of emotions going on. I've got fear. I'm standing all in front of you. I've got pleasure. That's what I'm feeling at the moment. And the reason is, this is the first time that I've been in front of the physical audience in over two years. <laughs> of course, I've done hybrid, but it's not the same, is it? Hybrid. I've been sitting on my computer, looking at a little dot. And I'm a people person. My eyes go down to the face. And my wife, Fatima, or you might know her as Afia, has got a ruler and taps it on the top of my computer so that my eyes come back up. <laughs> so I've had my wife tapping along for the last two years when my eyes drop onto a face. And we're, I'm a people person, as I said, and I look at people because I then can get feedback from the people I'm looking at. I can't do that in virtual. And of course, if I wanted to use body language, this is about it <laughs> on a virtual. I can't do the rest, I can't walk across the stage, I can't, you know what I mean, do anything but the virtual. But that's what I've had for the last two years. And I've been slowly, slowly dying. I want to get out there, I want to talk to an audience again. So I'm very happy to be here. Now I'm going to tell you a little story A couple of decades ago, and I'm being quite nice to myself there, I was working in a factory. There's a factory floor, and then we had the office above the factory. And it was about dinner time one day, and I decided to go for my dinner. And I walked out into the hallway, and then one of our employees was walking down. I'm going to call him Frank, because frankly, I don't really remember his name. <laughs> and straight away, I knew by looking at him, something wasn't quite right. We've all got that sixth sense that comes up. Something's not right here. And there's two ways you people deal with it. They ignore it and walk past it. Or they actually engage the person. I engage the person. Frank. So I said to him, Hi, is there anything I can help you with? The next minute, Frank was attached to my chest, crying his eyes out. It just grabbed me, had his head on my chest, and he was actually crying his eyes out. Now I'm going, whoa, what's happening here? All right, because it wasn't the sort of norm to do. This was the UK. There's two things I could have done. I could have pushed him off and said, what are you doing? So it would have been a a little bit of a conflict, start of a conflict. 
So I decided on another route, I said, are you okay? So I passed him on the back, talking to him. And he started to sob, and I was getting worried because my shirt was getting a bit wet. <laughs> I'm going along. So I thought, right, I said, come on, come to my office. So I took him in my office, and we sat down. I never had my dinner after that because I was in there two hours with it. I became a counsellor, just like that, talking about his problem that he had. It was a, a very close relative that had died and he didn't really have anybody else to let those emotions and those feelings out. So I sat there and I actually let him do it. Now, why do you think I told you that story? Anybody? Why that story? You all love stories, yeah. <laughs> stories is good for everybody. There's human connection there, but there's communication. We don't realize how we communicate. He was communicating to me for a start up by his body language and the way he was, when he shuffled along and, you, and I realized there was something wrong with him. The other thing is that and this, we've heard tonight or the last couple of days about data, data and analytics, we've had data, everything, we've heard IQs. But what I'm going to look about here, if I can get it to work, I think I've got a, AVs. To them. Hey, oh, that's it. <laughs> My goodness, I must have been long away so long for two years. Okay? Emotional intelligence. I think he has passed across it earlier on. And it's an area that people, you've got to know your own emotions. When I came up here, I told you there's a couple of emotions that I was having. My feelings and emotions. A bit scared, but pleasurable to be out in front of an audience straight away. So it's one of the areas that people should be aware of because emotional intelligence, if you know yourself and know your emotions, you will know other people's emotions. And that's an area that I find is lacking in a lot of places that I've seen. You've got the empathy. And we've heard empathy as we've gone through the morning and we've heard empathy yesterday. And there's two or three types of empathy. Cognitive empathy, emotional empathy. So these are different types of empathy that people look at. And we say it's putting ourselves into people's shoes. But that's not quite right to a certain degree. Because I could not put myself into somebody's shoes that's got cancer. So I couldn't put my shoes in how they feel, what they feel, or anything like that. But you can empathize with them. Okay? So that's empathy. So we've got self-regulation. Because I'm emotional, I'm in, car in control of my emotions. I don't get into arguments so much. <laughs> when I was a young kid, because I was always in trouble at some time for saying the wrong thing, and I wasn't in control of my emotions. But that's when you start learning to control your emotions. And of course we've got the social skills. We call them soft, some people call them soft skills, uh, but it's social. We learn them. Where do we learn them from? Your social skills. Yeah. Somebody from the back, somebody everywhere. I know all this, the people come to the front. But we've got people at the back as well. Social skills. From the environment, social skills. Family. That's where you get your social skills from. You'll learn your family, your social skills as you're growing up. 
I do things differently to my to Afia, my wife, because of the way I've been brought up. I've been brought up in the UK, and Fatima's been brought up in the Maldives. And sometimes the things that she does, I think, why are you doing that? And and vice versa. So our social skills are a little bit different. And we've got to recognise the social skills in everybody. I mean, in certain, in certain countries, if I went like that, it would be okay, but in other countries, you could get shot for it. In, North, in uh, South America. So we have to be aware of our social skills and where we are in the world at the time. So this is motivation, self-regulation, self-awareness and empathy. It's the emotional intelligence. So be aware of that. This is a skill. You don't just get it, just like that. Oh, I'm going to have emotional intelligence. Right, I'm emotionally intelligent. <laughs> right? You're not going to get it like that. You've got to work on it. And we've heard a few times, I mean, a thief, I think a thief, he has a journal. And we talked about, two, somebody's talked about two journals. Okay? But if you have an emotional journal and put your emotions every day and you can follow through how your emotions are, you, as we say, we get, you get up in the morning and we're talking about different things. But you've got emotions. Put those emotions down so that you know what your emotions are doing at specific times and feelings. And then you start to learn about your own emotions. And once you start learning it, you can start seeing it in other people. Yeah. So what I want to do next it's a tried, tested. Everybody's going to do it. Okay? And I think most people have done it. All stand up. <laughs> Everybody's... You've got to stand up. Yeah. Everybody's doing it. So it's standing up. Okay, great. So everybody's up. Now what I want to do is to have a partner, but it's uh, a lady, lady, or a gentleman, gentleman. Okay? So, unless you're married, of course. Unless you're married, you can have, you can have, uh, you're married, <laughs> are you married? <laughs> okay, so, have we got a partner? We're good, we've got a partner. Right, so what I want you to do, I want you to face your partner, okay? I want you to look into the eyes of your partner and smile. Keep smiling, look into the eyes of your partner and smile. Yeah? Okay? Right. And I want you to say a sentence. Any sentence. Okay, at least four or five words in that sentence. And I want you both to say the sentence after each other, but between you will say the sentence, then you will count to five in your head. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Once one's done it, the other person will do the sentence and then in their head they will do the exactly the same. Okay? So, go ahead. Do your... Keep smiling. Look at each other. I want to see the smiles. <laughs> Everybody smile. Okay, are we smiling? <laughs> One sentence, then in your head, count down one to five. <coughs> one sentence. Has everybody done it? You got the one sentence, and we've both done it. Okay, right. What I want you to do is to all sit down again. 
<laughs> I'm going to ask a couple of people. Okay. You know? So who wants to tell me how they felt when they did that? Okay? We got one, two, anybody at the back? How did you feel when you... <laughs> not, bl not blinking, not blinking. So you found it uncomfortable to look into somebody's eyes? Okay, okay. Sometimes it's down to culture. So, did you, well, how did you feel? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anybody else from the back? Oh, there's somebody in the front again. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. So the statement that you said, or the sentence you said, was positive. Yeah? Somebody tell me the sentence they said. Right. Okay. Huh? It's <laughs> not a speech. No, it's not a speech. Anybody? Anybody else? What was the sentence? Okay. Yeah, you can say the sentence. Oh, right. Okay. So that was really positive. I can see you're beaming like. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, good. So what you've done is just communicated with each other. Okay? Positively. You've looked into their eyes, you're smiling, and you've said something. And normally, it would be positive. Okay, I don't think anybody has. Anybody was a negative statement? <laughs> uh, anybody had a negative statement? <laughs> no. Did you put your hand up? <laughs> okay. So nobody had a negative statement. So it was a positive statement. Okay? What it is, is active listening. You have to listen to the person who is talking. Okay? What I did there was to give you five seconds afterwards to actually put that sentence into your head. Normally, when you are talking to somebody, you don't get five seconds. You're actually forming your question before the other person is finishing. So you're not actually listening. You're not actively listening. You've got to give yourself the time to listen to the whole question they are putting. And it's not a question of what they're actually saying, it's what their body language is saying as well. Have you ever talked to somebody and you know they're not there? A lot of time you were just talking to them and you, I, I've, I've done it. I've talked to somebody and I think they're not here. So I say something stupid. <laughs> so I put something in. I, I, I was talking to somebody and I actually put elephant into the sentence. <laughs> and they just, they didn't realise it was there. So they weren't listening to me. And sometimes when I do that, I, I, I put stupid things in. Uh, I, I won't say what my wife, but my wife when she's on the phone, um, I will say things to her and I know she's not listening. And I will, I will say stupid things. And she, she said, oh yeah, go on then. <laughs> but it happens. We know in communication that when you're talking to somebody, they are not going to be there a lot of the time. And you've got to be precise. And there's lots of ways you can see it, okay? If, if I'm standing here in front of, say, Iaz there, my feet are facing towards him, I'm looking at him, okay? But if I'm not listening to him, my feet will be 
somewhere else. So I'm looking over the gentleman over the corner, seeing what he's doing. Okay? So my mind's over there, he has his talking to me. But I'm not actually listening. It's a subtle listening, because I'll pick up certain words, but I'm interested elsewhere. You've got to be an active listener. When you've got people coming to you for problems, and you're trying to get solutions for them, you've got to get to the root of the problem. Let me just... I've got over there, haven't I? <laughs> okay. So these are some of the things for active listening. When you're actively listening. You summarise what they're saying. Uh, I mean, these, these you will find anywhere. Reflection. All these. And we know that in coaching and mentoring, and we've already heard from Shahina, they use these type of things when they're actually talking to clients. And as an HR person, when you've got some, somebody in your office, and you're talking to them, it may be because of a conflict, you've got to get to the root of the problem, you've got to be sure that you've got that problem. And it's self-aware, paraphrasing, observing body language. These are critical for active listening. Okay. So the, these, you can have these slides, you can pick them up anywhere. Okay. Now there's two things I've shown you, emotional intelligence and active listening. What about what you're actually saying? People forget what they're actually saying. Now some of that you can see. For the gentleman in the audience, if your wife says to you, we need to talk, <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> okay? So these, these there, you can see danger phrases. What's wrong with you? Okay? These are danger phrases. It will resonate in the person's mind. What have I done? What's wrong with me? It's a negative. So it's like... <coughs> You just say, I need your help. If your boss calls you to the office, Frank, come to my office. We need to talk. <laughs> now if he said, Frank, come to my office. I need your help. He might be telling you exactly the same thing he's going to tell you if he's doing the other. Okay? How did that crap up there? That bloke there. I was going to talk about personality tests, probably HR, you know all about personality tests, but you can use them in communication because once you find out what personality a person is, you can actually use words, body language um, to actually talk to that person. But there are a number of personality tests. Uh, I've, I've done a few, evidently um, I'm an I'm a introvert. I don't know where they got that from, but <laughs> evidently I'm an introvert. Um, but uh, that's the thing. Here we go. And as I can see there, my time is running out. It goes so quick down here, doesn't it? I don't hear you. Oh, that's so quick when you're down here. You've got so much to say. The quality of a life is the quality of your communication. So how you're talking to people, how your body language is, is how your life will go. Yeah. And this is, of course, Harry Anthony Robbins, your friend there. <laughs> okay? So the quality of your life depends on how you communicate. Now, I've lectured in, in Malaysia, because I'm in Malaysia at the moment, and I was teaching HR students. Uh, in diploma and bachelor students, bachelor degrees to students. And I, I was astounded how that they could not communicate. They were scared to communicate. Well, Fatima, my wife, uh, and myself, we did a meeting. We had 40 student nurses. And Fatima had to stand and hold the hands of most of the people for them 
to talk and communicate with the others. And this is in front of their open houses. Okay. And when you get people coming into your companies from HR, you know a lot of the time they have an induction to come in. They have to be put in. It's, I think some people have three months induction into, into uh, companies. But remember, when they're in universities, colleges, what they're learning is theory. When they come to you to start working, that's when they start practicing their theories. And communication, if, it communi if they can communicate with you, they will learn a lot quicker. Okay? So, I'm out. I'm gone. The pleasure's just left me. <laughs> the fear is gone, but the pleasure, I need more pleasure. So, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> and if there are any questions... No. Thank you, John.